And I would love to know what everybody thinks. What's the difference between Rick Rubin and DJ Khaled? Between Rick Rubin and DJ Khaled? Yeah. See, I feel like, I feel like position wise, maybe not much because DJ Khaled also plays like instruments and does actual production, right? I don't know if he plays. I, think that I, I saw a video went one time with him with a, um, a drum pad. I'm assuming he was really using it. It's not a full blown instrument. I mean, really Man, that could have been for the camera just just poking him. <laughs> That's it's what I'm saying. Because I'm I'm actually making an argument in that direction, but still, I don't know. I, I doubt it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm gonna give him a bit of a doubt okay. and say he does. You know what I'm saying? So you know they both can do that. And I would have to say on paper, well, service level not much, but on paper, the, I think the vibes that bring to the studio sessions are different. Like I, I feel like a studio session with Rick Rubin. It's like candles everywhere, maybe like light snacks, like grapes and mini bottles of waters and crackers and things like that. And it's a lot and more a couch. Yeah. You have a couch. Couch somewhere, probably incense playing, maybe like a yoga shaman in the corner. And I feel like DJ Cow is like the complete opposite. Like it's like wings everywhere, like alcohol, there's a lot of music playing in a different room in the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe like three or four like studio bad bitches. Just the hell. Like I feel like the vibes are completely different. They bring to bring what they bring out of an artist. Here's my thing. <laughs> and I say this as somebody who has been rocking with and studying Rick for a long time. So the reason I say this, it's funny enough, someone who's been an admirer of what Rick Rubin has built for a long time. And I'm talking about going back to early 2000s when I was younger, because watching stuff with him and Russell Simmons and documentaries and stuff. Somebody who's been admired for that long, I still always have like my independent thinking and way of questioning. So it's like I've felt this way, but now Rick Rubin has become like hot with a well, younger yeah. crowd, right? You got that podcast, man. You know, the podcast be him in the in the field. The podcast, the Joe Rogan interview. There's a lot of people that are like, "Oh yeah, I want to be like Rick Rubin," and and like you know whatever and they are, and now they're even using him as like clout points like you know when it's like a cool person to say that you actually know who that person is or you drop the quote from that person mm -hmm. he's becoming that person right now at the end of the day rick himself be like i don't really got no talents i just listen i just got my ear and i give my opinion that's what rick says that's what he said, man. What's the knock against DJ Khaled? People be like, he don't got no talent. He just be moving stuff together. <laughs> he just put people together. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Which is interesting because, again, like I said, I've admired and watched Rick for a long time. So this isn't hating for those people who can't understand nuance. This is me trying to question the weird hypocrisy that comes into play because of that it's like all right it's one thing to be like you just don't like dj Khaled vibe you don't like that he be talking and he's loud you know his approach his energy which i can see that type of person who has to like hustle and move in that way and his background versus rick's background and how things culminate are completely different mm -hmm. please don't get it twisted dj Khaled didn't have to grind different if you so I understand how he can turn be a turnoff, but say it's a turnoff because of him. Don't don't diminish what what he's created or what he's been a part of because he doesn't have this skill or that skill. When you love this other guy, and don't talk about the fact that he doesn't have this skill or that skill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's all in Brandon though. That's what I call it. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, 
we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah, I was about to say, I think the ironic thing of it is, well, not, well, it is kind of ironic. I think Rick Rubin gets a little bit more love because his look and the way he kind of talks about things goes hand in hand with the whole like any movement going on, right? Like be yourself, you don't have to conform to this real philosophizing, yeah, yeah, you know, shaman type guy, yeah, yeah, right, man. approach. And like DJ Khaled, like the surface level represents industry, right? The the, the motherfuckers buying the the billboards and gaming the the. the the, the the Grammys and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, he represents that crowd. What's funny is that, like I said, on paper, that's how it looks, but the service level, they're both the industry person, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Rick, Rick Rubin be philosophical talking about shit, he be talking, in his head, he thinking about the time he worked with, like, Travis Scott or Drake or some shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He not thinking about, you know, little who, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, he's, <laughs> in that sense, he's really no different. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, his brand is, like, down to earth, but, his experiences are not. Yeah, he in space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like saying something from up here, but in a way that makes you here feel here, and you think he's here with you, but it's like, no, he's thinking about up here. You know what I'm so they're both thinking mainstream. Like Rick Rubin dropped a song and all his philosophicalness, and that shit did less than 300K. He was like, he probably was sick. You know? You think Maybe. he care about that? I don't think he care about that. Though. I think he do. I think he's at a point where he can make us think he doesn't care because he has so much of it. It's like, like for real. Like, for real, they would be like, I don't really care about the Grammys. They'd be like, yeah, nigga, you for real. Of course you don't care at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, of course, at this point, it doesn't even make sense for you to care. Yeah. You know, so I think he doesn't, it, I think him not caring is authentic because he's already reached that point so many times. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, like a, it's like a billionaire telling you he don't care about money. It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess you've worked to the point where you don't have to oh, deal yeah. with it. You it's know what I'm saying? The fake shit. <laughs> the, particularly the self-made folks. It's like, yeah. You rich and you talk about work life balance and you need to do yeah. sound baths and saunas all the time. And now you got people thinking that that's what they need to do. When it's like, bro, but the what happened in 20 years? Yeah, in between that, bro. Before that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, to me, it's the exact same vibe. But like, I think it's that, I think deeper than surface level, they're the same person. Surface level, they're not, you know. And Rick Rubin's the only person in the music industry that can get away with being famous and looking disheveled all the time. And I, I, I think it's, you know, it's all that brand. Yeah, it's part of the brand, right? But he's the only person in the music industry that can get away with not looking clean all the time. It's crazy. The what the dirty feet feet on your couch type shit, baby during. Boy and Post Malone. Post Malone gets away with it too. Post Malone. I watch Post Malone interviews. That man that man be saying some wild shit. <laughs> See that I mean that right there. And he live on a ranch, so I know his feet dirty. That right there might be <laughs> you know. There's there's other things that come with why that is or why that is. I don't want to go down that route. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that'd take us a different direction but like, I think it's interesting to observe right at the same time because if, if you think about mapping out your own career right the utility of a conversation like that is these people generally speaking have a very similar skill set or what they provide you could say one's better than you or, or the other is better to you. That's fine. But with that being in mind, there being a similar skill set, the outcome is completely different. They're both successful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the way it looks, the way it feels, and that's when you start thinking about what do I want my brand to be? You know, how do I want to move and what moves are necessary to pattern after to get anywhere in that direction? So I think he's done a good job at, well, both of them have done a good job at doing it the way they want to do it. But that conversation, I feel like, People need to address the hypocrisy in that to really see every, see it for what it is. What makes them them, and why do you hate one, or why do you love the other, or why do you love the other one and hate hate one? Because I feel like with that type of approach, the Rick Rubin approach, hey, people like that are usually assholes, bro. Mm-hmm. Now, for me, I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but it's like they have like this very peaceful way of like communicating but then also what comes with that peaceful way of communicating but strong mindedness that created the work that they have that perspective comes with strong opinions and ways of doing things so in some categories people end up like oh wait I thought this person was 
all peace, but he's pretty brash and he's pretty straightforward. So you know that there's some people that probably are like, damn, I don't like this dude. <laughs> you know, like he's he's an asshole because he has a specific, oh yeah, that's trash. Like you know there's some stuff like, yeah, that's bad. Like his whole thing of why he even started, um, like a lot of his it was like this perspective of like, let's fuck the music up because it's perfect music is too I don't know it was like lame or boring how whatever words he would use at that time was like with the 80s or some shit but that was his whole his whole thing it was kind of like the rebellious rocker kid I'm from a pretty good background but I'm like rebelling and I don't really care about a lot of this shit that takes a certain type of mind mm -hmm. to be able to do that yeah all right so I don't know man yeah I just needed it's an answer that's been a question that's been on my heart I ain't know where you was going. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. Bruh, I've I just <laughs> so many people all of a sudden be on that bandwagon. And I'm cool with that. I'm not one of those people that, like we ref referenced earlier, all of a sudden, oh, this person ain't cool because too many people think he's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. But I'm just like, y'all are just shitting on DJ Khaled so hard. But y'all love this man. And what's the difference? The rollout. <laughs> hey, man, DJ Khaled ain't giving us quotables that fit over classical music. He said he said he's not or he's not he's not. His quotables fit over like trap beats. Ah. Like workout music. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you that. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you that, man. I can give you that. Oh man. Let's switch it up, man. Let's get into the science of creating music. Cause designer says hey, he got the sauce with creating hits. Okay. So <laughs> you had to you had to give me that, man. No, man. I mean, you know, I like designer, bro. So let's see what he got to say. Just the headline, though, hit me different. 